I lost 13.6 pounds in 30 days while reading this book. Hey guys, welcome back to Why Should I Read That? I'm John. Today we're talking about the book The 4-Hour Body by Tim Ferriss. And this book is a brick of a book. Man, there's like 700 pages or something in here. It's crazy. Now, I wa I'm going to get to that in just a moment. No, I didn't lift it a bunch of times over my head and lose 13.6 pounds in 30 days. But I did, by following the diet that's laid out in this book, lose all of that weight and have some other cool things to share with you in just a moment. But Tim Ferriss is a top 25 podcaster. This book and all three of his other works have gone number one New York Times bestsellers, I believe. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> anyway, I am a big fan of Tim Ferriss. You might call me a fanboy, but I wanted to put some of his methods to the test. And getting into this book, it's all about what can you do in fitness, in um, fat loss, in, in uh, muscle gain, that sort of thing, to find out what the minimum effective dose is. Here's a good example of that. Water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit, or 100 degrees Celsius. And if you go 150 degrees Celsius, or 400 degrees Fahrenheit, I guarantee you the water's gonna boil just the same. According to Ferris, it's the same with our bodies. We're designed in such a way that if we are able to find the right cascade of actions or, or inputs, we're going to have measurable outputs. Right near the, the front of the book, it says, remember, when it comes to fitness, it's impossible to evaluate or even understand anything that you cannot measure accurately. But that begs the question, however, what are we going to measure? And Ferris lays out in the prologue of this book a number of tracks that you can go through to read certain chapters regarding certain outcomes, right? So I read the five chapters regarding rapid fat loss. There are ones on muscle gain. There's ones on improving sleep. There's even one on incredible sex, which frankly is not relevant to me. There's ones on uh, becoming mostly injury proof, things like that. So if in the future I get to some of those sections, I might do another video on that, but we're going to talk about the rapid fat loss. And Ferris says you have to track three things in order to watch these, this, this progression in your own life. So it's your, your weight, your body fat, and then what he calls your total inches, the circumference of your arms, your waist at your navel, your hips, and the widest part of your thighs. So for your reference, I started off at 222 pounds, 24% body fat, and total inches totaling 122 inches. So that was on the 2nd of January when I started what Ferris calls the slow carb diet. The diet introduced in this book, the slow carb diet, is one that consists of only five rules that you need to follow. And I was able to see some pretty exciting results following these five rules, changing nothing else about my lifestyle. I didn't exercise anymore, I didn't change I changed nothing except my eating habits. Now, let me go through these five rules a second. They're pretty simple. First of all, don't eat any white carbohydrates. So no bread, no rice. Well, can I eat brown rice or can I eat quinoa? No, you can't eat it. Number two, eat the same meals over and over again. Now, you're probably already doing this, but you just don't realize it. Just shift those meals that you're already eating over and over into something that adheres to the diet. I ate chili quite often for dinner, and every morning at breakfast I'd have um, a couple eggs, two or three, lentils, and spinach. Um, according to a podcast by Tim Ferriss, he says there's a, a certain micronutrient that you get from those three things together. Number three, don't drink calories. So... Cut out the pops, cut out the juices, cut out the milk, all that stuff. Anything that has calories, don't drink it. Um, now, I did have pretty consistently a uh, diet type energy drink. Um, the Zions is my favorite, and it has no calories, no sugar, but I only had one per day. Number four, don't eat fruit. Fruit is one of those things that it's a huge source of sugar 
in our diets and you're able to get most of the, the vitamins that you need through other sources. Also, you can get fruit on the day that you have off, which, which is the fifth, the fifth thing. Take one day off per week. I usually took it on Saturday. I called it Fatter Day, according to some of the people that are in the book. It's, a, it's the cheat day. Let me just read you one of the Saturdays of the things that I consumed. I'll show pictures of them as well. I started off the day with two donuts, an apple, a banana, and a physics energy drink. Then I went to Chick-fil-A and had a Chick-fil-A number one sandwich, waffle fries, and two Dr. Peppers. I ate an entire Jack's pizza for lunch. I drank a naked juice to get some fruit in the afternoon. Then I went to McDonald's, got a Grand Mac, a small fry, and a Coke. Later on, I went home and ate an entire pint of Haagen-Dazs cookie dough ice cream. I had two glasses of wine before bed, and throughout the day, I drank over 80 ounces of water. <laughs> Following this diet, which seems crazy, but there is a good reason for all this, I went from the, the numbers that I showed you earlier to now I weigh 208.4 pounds, my body fat is down to 19%, and the total inches is went from 122 to 112.37. That's crazy, and I've had some awesome results, and I've had fun while doing it, actually, following the slow carb diet from Tim Ferriss. The final thing I want to share with you guys is the psychology that I experienced following a diet for 30 days. There was definitely a release in eating all of this junk food that I wanted on a Saturday. And as Ferris has said in the book, a, a diet that's 60% effective or 80% effective, but is implemented 100% is definitely better than a perfect diet that isn't implemented at all. So that's the thing. I don't know all of the science behind all of this stuff. I do know my story and the fact that I've had some pretty crazy results in 30 days. And I also know that the psychology of it, I was able to stick with this diet because I had an outlet four times during the month. So I'm going to go ahead and continue on with the diet and see how things go over the next month. Maybe add some exercises in from the rest of the book. But I encourage you to check this out if you've had trouble sticking with a diet in the past or just want to see what you can change over 30 days. Tim Ferriss is a great source for the minimum effective dose, whether it comes to body changes or learning a new skill, whatever it happens to be working on your business, finding out what the best do and modeling ourselves after that is something that's always always has value regardless of the application. So I encourage you to go check out the four hour body. Again, you don't have to read the entire thing. Man, it's, it's really long, but figure out what you want to change and go out and learn from the best. I'll catch you next time. All right. Thank you so much for watching the video, guys. I enjoyed making this one. It was fun for me to see the changes in my own life over 30 days. Go check out some of the other books on the 80-20 like the rule, which a lot of this book is based on. Talk about it in The One Thing, talk about it in The Slight Edge. There are a lot of other books that utilize the same principles. Catch you later.